Hey guys, welcome back to another HeartMyControlsProtector.net tutorial. And today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to add and configure a door. To start, we'll navigate on the home page to the hardware section and select doors. Click the add button on the screen. Find a name and description for this door. Select which panel we're going to attach this door to. Select a port on the panel. In this case, we'd only have port 1. If it were a two-door controller, we'd have two ports available. Select the initial time zone for this door. For now, we'll select Always Card Access. We can change this afterwards. Select a holiday group if you think this door should have a, a separate schedule on holidays. The next section is for the readers that are attached to the door. Provide a name and description and select a reader port. If you're installing a back-to-back -back reader configuration, you'll need to disable the integrated motion on the edit panel screen before you can configure the second reader. Once we're satisfied with the initial settings for this door, we can click Save. You have the option to add another or continue configuration. On the edit door screen, we have more options available. On the general tab, we have configurations and items that we set when we added the door, such as the door schedule. On the options tab, we have many exposed options, and some will be covered in separate videos. Near the top, we have some miscellaneous options, including an option for the door to play a sound upon opening. The timer section allows us to adjust internal timers as to how long the door will stay unlocked upon access granted, how long the door is allowed to be held open before it causes a held open alert. The automatic opener section gives us options if there is an automatic opener device on the door. We'll talk more about these in another video. The last section is the disabled. Any items in this section that are checked are disabled. The most common items you might check here are the first open and held open buzzer. By default, we disable unlock by motion. If you did want the integrated motion to unlock that door, you would uncheck this box. Click save on the bottom if you made any changes. More often than not, you won't mess around with too many settings on this page. Moving on to the Reader 1 tab, we have our reader specific options, including if we have a keypad reader attached to the reader port, how long is allowed between pressing keys on the keypad for the pin to be valid. We have an option called back to back interference. It allows us to tell the door controller that this reader is back to back to another reader. Traditionally, this can result in bad reads or cards accidentally reading on both sides of the door. The traditional solution is to shove tinfoil on the wall, but we settled for a way to temporarily disable the reader if the reader on the other side of the wall detects a card. The last section is triple swipe. We can configure if a triple swipe option is enabled on the reader and what action or actions could potentially be performed. We'll talk more about the cool triple swipe actions and things we can do with it in another video. If you've made any changes, click save. Next tab here is Reader 2. Since we are using the motion controller, Reader 2 is disabled. The next tab here is Areas, primarily used with anti-passback. We'll talk more about that in another video. And the last section is Camera Associations. If we had any camera systems talking to Protector.net, we can make associations between a camera and a door. This is useful for historical video playback and event to video management. Finally, the last step is to do an update to the controller or wait for the auto update to update. First thing we can do is present a credential to the reader and see if we get an event back to the software. That's a good indicator that the panel knows about this door. Unknown user denied access to front door in to invalid card or pin. Perfect. That concludes this tutorial. I'll see you guys in the next video.